Why, good evening, or morning, or afternoon, brothers and sisters. Didn't know I had a back a tattoo on the back of my neck, did you? <laughs> that means youngest sister, or youngest sibling. So anyways, <laughs> welcome. So in this video here, um, I want to point out the comments. We're not going to bring them up, because I don't want to, you know, poke fingers. I don't want it to look like that, because they were helpful. We will get into that very quickly here. To anyone who is a viewer or a subscriber from the past videos, please allow me at least 10 minutes of your time. Especially if you're sitting on the john, okay? For that is where Belphegor, the sloth demon, the seventh deadly sin, resides. Because he is the sloth demon, the lazy demon. Anyways. We'll get into that in another video for looking into the seven deadly sins that coincide with each of their own demons, okay? So in this one here, what I want to do is start out by pointing out, you know, my thanks, my from my heart, deep thank you to sisters and potentially brothers in the past that have came into the comment section when I was doing tarot and were literally throwing stones at me you might be what do you mean it's virtual right but if we look at the lord's words metaphorical and literal at the same time it all makes sense for when i had visited jesus christ i had asked him what where do you want me to dabble in today what, what story do you want me to learn today? What lesson do you have for me today? I open up my brand new Bible that's gifted to me f from him for this new journey. Thank you, Jesus. Um, to help. So he had brought me to this one specific chapter. And I said, well, let me go back, come back here and go forward so I fully understand what it is. Though I'm sure when I hear it, I'm going to know it. And so I did. And where I found myself was in the Old Testament. I'm going to mess it up, but that is part of my challenge. Deuteronomy. Okay. He took me to chapter 13. And so I was like, okay. So I looked at what it's supposed to represent, what I'm getting into here. He took me to the story about beware of the false gods and then this here is where it mentions about throwing stones it says to throw stones at those who commit such sin I have my Bible right here opened up to it so if you want to follow through we are going to be looking at chapter 13 between the verses of 6 to 11. After this verse, I will get into something that's handwritten for my past subscribers, which will coincide with this verse. If your brother, the son of your mother, your son, or your daughter, the wife of your bosom or your friends who is as your own soul secretly entices you saying let's go and serve other gods which you have not known neither you nor your fathers of the gods of the people which are all around you near to you or far off from you from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. You shall not consent to him or listen to him, nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare him or conceal him. But you shall surely take his life from him, take his blood from him, I will say. Your hand shall be first against him to put him to 
D E A T H. Um, Daddy YouTube, I gotta be careful. And afterwards, the hand of all the people, and you shall stone him with stones until he dies. Until he goes. Sorry, YouTube. Because he sought to entice you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So all Israel shall hear and fear, and not again do such wickedness as this among you. We will look further into this, further into the video. But this is what I'm saying. The stones that were thrown at me in the comment section, metaphorical stones, is scripture. I had a few views or viewers that had popped in occasionally that were throwing stones at me, throwing scripture at me, so I can see the relation of God's word to draw my attention from this gray area that is created from wickedness, from false gods, to confuse us humans, to divert us from Jesus' word, his truth, the book that he had provided us as basically a manual script to help us live in his footsteps. And also at the same time, be rewarded. For if you have or have never been down the steps with Lord Jesus, then you are allowing yourself to be blind. Part of my mission here with this channel now, with allowing this to be in God's hands, is to help those who have fallen asleep, helping the sisters and brothers throw stones at those that need to hear the stones, along with educating others that need to hear. Now, this does relate to my entire life dealing with spiritual warfare. That's what this video will be about. Right now, at this moment, I'm not sure how I want to title it. I don't have a thumbprint. We're just rolling with it, okay? Because I asked God, you know, we were we were talking back and forth as I was reading through. Like, when I, especially when I got to the stone part, I said, now I see. Now I understand. I see. I get it. But how does it relate to with the rest? And therefore, this is where the handwritten stuff comes in. I had wrote with him by my side. The stones that have been thrown at me from my Lord God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, along with my now fellow mo mothers and sisters, I thank you all for the stones that have woken me up and flown me back to our Lord and Savior, for how dare I allowed myself to be fooled by the devil and his minions, for this is the truest reason why things have changed from something wicked to the Almighty God, our Lord and Savior, speaking about my channel, channel and the change how I have placed it in God's hands. What he wants to put out there through my channel as his messenger, that's what we're going to do. This is my third return to Jesus for this time. I'm holding on tight. Number three is very, very important to me. I've always loved the number three. For many reasons. I believe if I heard it correctly, I do have to look through in scripture, but Jesus Christ was crucified about 33 years old. I was 33 years old when I started this channel. That's why the number is 33 and my full name, first name comes out to 33. So, connection. God works in mysterious ways. Mystical, another word for mysterious. I love it just proof I want my channel to be proof that Jesus is real see my past see me now and see me 
in a couple of years. Watch the difference. Listen to my words loud and clear. Please. And I'm utilizing this platform to help prove his word, his truth on how he is a forgiving and loving God. He is. Especially when we, his children, recognize, repent, and repair. For with this channel, at this stage, this point, it is the repair part. Repairing my relationship with him our lord and savior here on this channel not only was the sin my sin i shared my sin to others by using this public platform to allow others to sin for in the original tes testimony deuteronomy 13 Verse 6 to 11, which is what we had just read in the beginning here, is where God tells us to throw stones to one who is committing said sin. For it is not us that judge each other. I'm explaining the sisters here that threw stones at me. I'm explaining their side, why they did what they did as well. For it is not us that judge each other, it's mothers, brothers, and sisters of Jesus Christ that help defend his word. Love comes in the form of tough love to open up those that fell asleep and needs to be woken up. Wake up, mothers, brothers, and sisters, for things are becoming more and more corrupt he lord jesus christ will be coming back for those who come back to him now just to back up those sisters and brothers that were throwing stones at me metaphorical stones for it was scripture stones to my face that is absolutely fine. This sister needed that. That w That is apparent. That is obvious. And thank you for that. This is a thank you video to you. I really do appreciate that. I do want to bring forth, before we move on to my entire life. I mean, we're going back, man. We're going back to before 1999. And that was quite the year. But we're going before that. Probably about 1995. So anyways, before we do that, before we go down that trip, I want to back up the sister and brother's words about the Lord's words. Because it says in Revelations, he took me here today for this video here purposely. And then he has something else that I want to, that he wants me to state out for the future. To keep in your back pocket. Because this is very relevant to now, Okay. Not what I'm about to read now, but after that, all right? This here, this scripture, Revelations chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. It states, Blessed are those who do his commandments, the Lord's commandments, obvious, that they may have the right to the tree of life. For those of you who have done research in divination, does that not sound familiar, that phrase, the tree of life? I'll read that again. That they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the gates into the city, but outside are dogs. Now these dogs are Cerberus. Mythological. Greek. You can even compare compare and contrast Homer's Odyssey and uh, Iliad with side by side with the Bible. 
it is quite something. It is an interesting ride, I tell you. Continuing on, outside are dogs and sorcerers. We'll get back to dogs later on in this channel, I promise you, because about souls and that. Anyways, and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Practices a lie. Divination is a form of practice that's been given to us to confuse us, to curveball us away from God and question his words. For those of us who at least have not been brought to the Bible at all in our childhood at all for that's going to be the toughest part because they will be the weakest ones they'll be the easiest ones to be manipulated into continuing practicing lies or even loving lies falling into idolaters and etc now the part to keep in your back pocket for the future do I still have your interest I hope I do if I still have your interest please do me a favor hit that like button if have not before hit that subscribe thank you in advance also comment freely please thank you in advance so we are in the same chapter but the verses 18 and 19 it says for I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds, that's the part to keep in your back pocket. If anyone adds these things to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy God shall take away his part from the book of life the book of life has a hundred and forty four thousand names in it that will be entering his kingdom however whatever your religion may be and believing how he comes back no matter what there is a hundred and forty four thousand names in his book of life that will be given the right to the tree of life. And it does say here that you will also have an entry here to his holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So those who take away and add, who manipulate to changes in any shape or form by the heart and stick to it and mean it from the heart, there is a special place with God's wrath for those who do this who tack on and take away but remember there is wickedness which will bring practices of lies it is up to you in your heart for you to continue practicing certain lies that you have been fed. That's why it's important to read between the lines. It's part of my mission here for this channel. This is what I mean about removing the blindfolds. If you do not understand right now, you will in the next few videos, I promise you. Members, I'm getting to you, okay? I would like to, I have, God gave me a special one to start off for you guys, which will be that seven deadly sins with their specific demons that will be a member's first video and then will be released to the public after a certain amount of time i will let the public know when that certain amount of time will be just so you are aware so take from those words what you will but to me i take it as a warning 
do you want to, daughter, continue this lie that you had stumbled upon? Because it, I have. Now this is where the my thought process. I had asked him. Okay, this is slightly. I'm slightly starting to be able to see how this can be backtracked to my childhood. Now, I have. If you have watched my videos in the past, I have spoken about the spiritual warfare that I have dealt with in my past during childhood and furthermore a couple of times and a few times but not all of it here in this video I would really like to do my best to talk about all of it from beginning to now okay so I I do have partial memories when I was a fetus, believe it or not. What I remember is hearing some sort of commotion going on outside of my dwelling, the womb. And I heard, don't worry, that's nothing for you right now. You just close your eyes, relax, and rest. And I said, okay, I will. And I, or mentally. And I said, okay. So I did. Okay. So that's the first thing that I, I remember. Okay. And that I see as a spiritual thing because I've been brought. We are flesh. We are created from Jesus Christ. He, he sends us down. He chooses the family, right? tells us where to go ships us along okay so I believe that that was communication with God and I do remember being in my parents van as a little girl I had to been at least two three years old it, it was a time where I had a hard time using my words out, out loud but in my mind I could make like a complete full sentence and every time I would ask a question or be confused on something something would answer it right away and then I would ask it other questions upon the situation and I would get other answers God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ as a child I was being answered by all three of them if not then the Holy Spirit at least, one of which I was being answered, I was being communicated with. And then there was a time where I started doubting this. And the moment I started doubting this connection that I was having, I remember waking up screaming from the top of my lungs next to my nightlight. And I could swear I peed the bed. But that's not why I was there at my nightlight. I had I just woke up. It was like I was I had I slept walked or or something. I don't do that. I've never done that. And I remember my mom coming in, just swooping me up from my nightlight spot because it was only a little ring of light. And she pulled me into her room and we fell asleep. Then a little afterwards, I realized I started waking up at 1 o'clock in the morning. And I started hearing things going on in the house. And I was confused because my parents were definitely asleep. And I knew my dad, when he would occasionally wake up at nighttime to come out and get a Coke, crack that baby open, I would hear it back in my room. And I would hear him either cough a little bit or grunt or wiggle his way back to the bed but his occasional time to do so was about two hours before his alarm went off which would have been 3 a.m. I'm getting up at 1 a.m. and I don't know why I felt quite really wide awake but a little tired at the same time and I would hear noises but these footsteps I were hearing were not the heaviness of my father's footsteps and it was not the 
light <laughs> ball of the toe and heavy heel like my mother. <laughs> my dad had the heavy top sound because he had a beer gut. And my mom, she would always walk heavily with her heels through the house. She was a, a thudder, a heavy footer through the house, okay? Women, you know what I mean. <laughs> I have done it many times, especially when I was mad, or also known as rage cleaning, or not knowing how to speak your words when you are frustrated. Um, so anyways, I knew it was neither parent and I knew it wasn't the dog because the dog was certainly sleeping with my parents. If at that time we had a dog, I don't think we did at that time. Sasha didn't come along until a little later. This was a little bit before she came along. So I would also hear it going on in the living room. I thought, what in the world is going on? And I'd peek out my bedroom, look down the hallway. I would feel something. I didn't know what it was, but it kind of took me back. And I looked down, and I seen no shadow. I didn't hear any conversation going on. And every now and then, you would hear, like, a, a little bit of a word or so. Like, it sounded like somebody was trying to say something. But while they were in the kitchen, every now and then, very rare. But I didn't try to focus in on it. I was a kid. So... Then occasionally I'd hear something going on downstairs, rustling around. And, uh, do we have, like, wh what could have gotten downstairs? Raccoons? And eh, we really don't have raccoons here. Foxes? How? How could a fox get downstairs? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Like, I'm trying to make logical sense of everything that is happening here. But none of it I can see. I can only hear. So, after that, this is around the time I want to point out that this is the time where my parents were not getting along. They had allowed outside sources of our house, as the Bible would say, our dwelling or our household, and allow that to affect them in some shape or form dealing with certain sins, temptations, trick of the mind to manipulate. They become stress. That's what the demons like to do. They want to divide the house so that it will crumble. If you look back at our last video, when we looked at Matthew chapter 12, a house divided cannot stand so my parents were starting to divide their union was no longer strong as it was at least in 1988 the year before I was born I mean things were peachy keen probably but also starting to get really stressful and if you watch my dad's 50th birthday video you can definitely hear between their conversations and my mom's retaliated voice that things were not going smooth. There was some sort of jealousy that was being held within because they were thought that somebody was lustful for somebody else. But that's because of how their relationship had started. So you see there's some form of ripple effect that the parents were dealing with. But that had caused spiritual warfare in the house to start stirring around and messing with the child next generation that's what the bible means when they when it when it says about the next generation we'll get into that when we look into the section where it speaks about beware of false gods deuteronomy chapter 13 so anyways At this point, I start going to a babysitter. My mom ships me to a babysitter. Oh, I love this woman. She's like another, she's like a new mother figure for me. A new mother for me. And what a blessing she was. 
She was so sweet. My mom was jealous of her because of the bond that I had created with her. But the thing is, this babysitter had a special key that my mother had started to neglect. But she wasn't recognizing it for in order to repair it and make things better at this time. For I was to be the next, like, wake up, daughter, for you, you need to wake up. You, she, my mother has said that she was told by doctors that she was, she went to three doctors. And they had said that after her firstborn, she will no longer have children. But lo and behold, she met my father. She said that she prayed to God that for one more child. If she had one more child, she would love to have one more child. And here I am. But it was all taken for granted. She did not realize what she was supposed to do. She was supposed to help lead the next generation towards Christ, the giver of life. He gives us the blood that holds under our flesh to give us life. And it's when we take that life the blood for granted is where we start to fail. And that's what the seven sins are for us to recognize, to look at. We need to understand it to help other brothers and sisters peacefully, harmonically. We need to be humble, loving. That's what God and Jesus wants us to do because that's what they give us. That's the, one of the important things of their, their lesson is that what they give to us, they would love to see us give it to each other willingly, but also beware of wicked things. Be, be on your feet, on your toes. For these are the things that I am learning on this third connection to Jesus Christ. And I am telling you with all my heart, I am not letting go this time. I'm still not perfect, but I'm not letting go. So now back to my babysitter. This babysitter, the key that she had for me was to open my eyes to Jesus Christ, open my heart for what she had done one summer is what has started to help it all. She took me to multiple, I'm going to mess it up, I always did, Bible vacation, or vocation of Bible schools. So you go to, basically it's like a Bible camp, is how I took it as. It's a Bible day camp, study Bible, Bible study at a little camp with kids of your age. It was wonderful. I loved it. I loved it. I had so much fun. I learned so much. I don't have much of a memory of them. But there's this, there's one specifically, this one specific church. And I'm wondering if God wants me to come back to. Anyways, that's something between him and I. With, <laughs> with this one specific one, there's one memory that sticks out clear than I ever did before I went off to have a silent moment to myself and this girl just came out out of nowhere she was blonde I remember that and she just abruptly came to me she was she was a little aggressive I thought I remember I thought that wow kind of uh, like all up in my face really mm, forceful right now and so I didn't say that. I kept that to myself. For I was willing to listen to what she had to say. And she says to me, you know, Did you know that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior? And I said, well, yes, that's what this, this whole, whole thing here, this whole, what we are at is to teach us. And she said, 
Did you know that he had died on the cross for your sins? She says, just like that, your sins. And I thought, well, you're a sinner too. And I said, well, yeah. And she said, there is a prayer for sinners. And I said, okay. I don't know. I'm thinking, I don't know why you're attacking me like this. If you're not giving me any reason, just attack. But we are children, so I will continue to listen. And she goes on and says, you're going to pray this prayer with me. Are you ready? And I just was still kind of set back. And I said, okay. And so we prayed the prayer. And I opened up my heart to Jesus Christ. I did. You know, this, this little girl was very forceful and just, like, abrupt, aggressive. That's not how Jesus wants us to be. For her parents, not being judging, but I'm taking that page and placing it to myself for something in my back pocket so I don't teach my children to be aggressive when it comes to the Lord's word. The Lord wants us to be loving and humble when it comes to sharing our word. When somebody tries to defile the Lord's word, that is, and they don't want to listen. Even when scripture is brought up, then that is where aggression could potentially arise. Or if you think of it as if if God was you, okay, working through you, even Jesus Christ, if they were working through you, what would they say? How would they be? How would they treat you as a child to Jesus Christ? What would he do? That's where that could come from, right? What would Jesus Christ do? So. I'm not saying I was in the right or wrong. But that's how I had prayed the prayer. The sinner's prayer. And things were a little better then. Until my grandfather passed away. My dad's dad. Ooh, that was hard. That hurt my heart. I cried and cried. My mom said it only took McDonald's to make me happy, but that was the only grandparent that I had held very close in my heart throughout that little blip of time. For looking back right now, in 2024, on this day, the 19th of March, I'm currently 34. I'll be 35 this year. So I do see how like two years can be a blip, in, blip of time to Jesus Christ for a year to him is a hundred thousand years. No, not a hundred thousand. X and A on those two zeros. <laughs> a thousand years. I'm sorry. I've been reciting that over and telling myself that over and over again in the shower, out of the shower. And I'm like, wow, it's like a blip of time. It's like a, a passing of gas in time. Like trying to think of different ways of what, what seconds would be to Jesus Christ. What would minutes be, you know, hours and blah, blah, blah in my mind. Like, wow, like this just fathoms me. So that's just, I'm sorry. I got that. Anyways. For you know, you know. <laughs> so, after my grandfather had passed away, there was some stress that was thrown onto my father's shoulders, which was dealing with deeds and wills and just a shop and the contents that were in this shop and the land that the shop was on and having to deal with auctions and all of that nonsense for honestly if he was in the lord's hands he would be able to see what would have happened but that's okay not too long after 
my grandfather had passed away and my father was dealing with deeds and wills and all that fun jazz that comes along after a parent unfortunately passes away. What started happening with me is I as a child started you know, seeing what is seeing some other things. These what I was dealing with before started amplifying a little more. Becoming a little more confused, seeing my parents being more combative together. They would always argue with each other instead of stopping, listening, and talking to each other and discussing what the problem was in a civil manner. They could not find that civil area to speak to one another about their true feelings and they could not listen to each other for some reason which could be arrogance quite possibly or stubbornness only God knows so a little later after that I started getting attacked by a creature that would show itself to me occasionally after I would turn the hallway light off it would be it would show itself to it to my mind in my mind it was a little gruesome I mean it wasn't big it was small so it's, it's I would take it as a minion if you would for um, see chiefs gods false gods all of them for they are big but there is also tiny ones too if you look at mythological creatures for some were painted pretty but does not mean that they are actually pretty within or have a true look pretty look to themselves some people beautyize them I guess is a decent way to say it to make it look glorifying but it's not glorifying in the end for in the end you get paid God's wrath if you follow down that suit you comfortable little dude I think you're comfortable and kind of confused <laughs> this isn't where he usually hangs out somebody was just all some peppy so anyways because he's been teething on and off Anyways, so after that, we'll say I was in about fifth grade. This is my next interaction here between God and the devil. So with God, there was a realization when my grandfather had passed away. I asked my father, well, when, when did my grandmother pass away? my grandfather's wife he said well she had passed away in 1988 the year before I was born and I said well why why would that happen and he, he was confused so I said why would God take away grandma before I could meet her just curious and my mom said, well, sometimes God has to take someone away to bring back another soul. Now, now I see that my mother is falling subject to or witness to reincarnation in a way. Okay? But you can... there. We can get into that further on in this, okay? Because it's kind of a give and take. Because we are God's children. Wow, look at you. <laughs> that was good, buddy. <laughs> so, anyways, after that, um, I started to pray and talk to God. Every night when I was in fifth grade, before I fell asleep, I would pray to God and I would ask him, if at all, by any chance, Lord, if my grandmother is up there in heaven with you, could you please just do me one little favor? One little favor I ask of you. Could you please, Father, Lord, could you please just tell her I say hi and though I don't really know her 
I still really love her, and I would like to get to know her more and more. If there's any way, if I could learn more about her, or you could just simply tell her I love her and give her a hug and kiss from me, and that I can't wait to meet her. I prayed that every single night, and after that, I started realizing the type of relationship my parents were having. And so I said to God, I started praying every night. I prayed, Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that when I get married, I pray that the final person that I am with, that they will love me for who I am. I had this long list for him, for God, and for my future person. Oh, you little stinker. stinker. <laughs> a positive note on that, on the outcome. That person finally came, and that is the father of this little stinker. Okay, I have to put you in your bouncer. We're going to hear some bouncing in the background. So, after fifth grade, fifth grade, I'm still in elementary school. Things start to get a little wishy-washy with me and my path with Jesus in sixth grade, but I was learning something else. I was placed in a special needs class it's called the speech class. It's for those, I, I guess, that have a problem with memory, I suppose, because we had to memorize a amount of numbers. But as I found out later on, it is a connection to having Asperger's. My parents were not the type of parents that would, you know, recognize mental illness and take them. So I had some cross wires, but they helped me, to be quite honest with you. They make me who I am today, and I find it as a tremendous blessing. So don't allow to patronize, okay? So anyways, moving on. and say I'm in about seventh grade. This is where I turn 13. I'm a year ahead at this point. I will be two years ahead of my classmates in the head of years to come. But anyways, at this point in seventh grade, I am a year ahead. Or age, yeah, a year ahead. So, this is where my mother purchases me my first deck of tarot from Borders at the local mall. This deck I started fuddling with. But my mother wanted to watch me. And I thought, well, that's kind of funny, Mom. Because you had said that you will never allow a Ouija board in the house. I never had asked that. She just threw that out there on her own. So I was a bit confused there. Like, what? where is this coming from? For you had seemed differently about this department a little bit ago where that's why I was a little hesitant to come here in this department at the new age department now let's say I'm 13 so that makes it 2011 so sorry 13 2012 because you got attacked anyway Asperger's kicking in there um so this deck here she had asked me to take this deck and have my nephew, who is committed as a crime at a young age, a, a criminal offense towards his siblings, which is actually very much so sin. The whole sexual... Actual problems okay being addicted to x so i'm trying i'll try my best to keep it you know family friendly some words it's a little hard especially when you look into the bible at times so i was a little confused on this even more why should i ask this one or allow this one to ask for he is like obviously what he does is not right 
Looking back now on the Bible, the Bible would consider it as wicked ways. Why are we feeding into this wicked ways with this? As a parent, or from a child's standpoint, I'm waiting and trying to find the the adult's like logicness to this. So, at some point, I maybe about a year or two afterwards, I threw them to the side. In fact, I think I either donated them or I threw them out. I don't remember how I did it. But anyways, I got rid of them. And then I started hitting my really dark era. Things my parents were not getting along well. For as I found out later on, what I did with the cards this was not my payback for what I did to the cards. What I was going through was because of what my parents were doing outside of our dwelling, outside of our house. When they would go out to the public, out to the work field. My mother was a secretary for a DA. <clears throat> okay. And which they made fun of her there. They were no friends. They acted like they were friends. And shame on you for doing so if you are one of those people who are watching me. I'm just saying, shame on you. Because she was not good with her words. She was not very literate when it comes to writing words out. Like the word to, she would always write T-O. She couldn't differentiate the difference between T-O and T-O-O. She could with T-W-O. You see? So instead of helping her, they made fun of her. But besides that, there was a, a nasty guy, a lawyer, that came to her and had asked her about a couple of questions about somebody that he was going to court for. He was lawyering for. This is not to make any lawyers look bad, but at least this one particular one. So he asked my mother out on a date. My mom didn't tell my dad about this, at least the full story. She told him what she felt comfortable telling him. But my mom, what my dad might have knew because he, that's probably what he was drawn into. As a child, I could see it every day. When a man would walk by, she would always lust over them, catcall them. You know what it's like to watch your own mother catcall your economics teacher? <laughs> oh, mom, come on. <laughs> you. You. <laughs> Anyways, so things started getting a little funky with them. And because of that, their, their reward out of doing this, and my dad, my dad would go to work. He would come home. He would tell you he's not a saint. He's not perfect in any shape or form. He's an honest man. He would tell you where he knew he was wrong. If he was proven he was wrong, he would be honest with it and about it. And he would feel very bad when he was wrong. Honestly, he would always come and apologize to me as soon as he possibly can. Rihanna, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry if it seems like I came off a certain way. Boom. I love that. My mom is always because I had said so. Because I say so. Mother, that is not a reason. That is not a very good reason to give a child. Because I don't know what to do in the future if you are not right next to me. For our Lord Savior is with us. He gives us the Holy Spirit. That's our blessing for connecting our hearts and allowing Him to come into our hearts. And that is what helps us guide through. But I also need a parent to help guide me as well. But she would always fail because she was more worried about more money, more money, more money, more money. She was a scratch-off gambler, hardcore, and also Powerball. This woman was so obsessed over power balls. This is where my mom was sending the most. She was the most center, and I, as a child, was getting the spiritual warfare effect. 
Please take all of this as backside note if you are a parent. This is very important. I keep this as a memory and a note to myself for my own children. Especially dwelling in the same household that I did as a child and experienced the same thing. So it's a memory every day. Or memory every day. I'm being reminded. So my mom was so deep into Powerball gambling about six or seven years and this is funny <laughs> roughly seven years because I was married to my ex-husband at the time and we came out to visit and I was downstairs just reminiscing in the old toys you know just thinking around and I came across this box this box I'm trying to find something in a comparison it was at least two Bible lengths, okay? Bible length. This is my mother's Bible. One of them. So, and at least, we'll say about five inches deep. It's almost like a perfect square, to be honest with you. <laughs> but anyways, this box was jam-packed full with Powerball numbers that she used in the past that were losers. Right there, I realize my mom is so far into this. She's so committed into gambling. Money after money after money. Take my dollar, take my dollar, take my dollar, take my dollar. Taking the chance, taking the chance, taking the chance to win this millions, win this millions, chance to win this millions. But I'm never winning that millions. I've watched her my entire life. For what's going to be in a few months, 35 years. I have watched her. And it just became worse and worse and worse and worse. She did like release the, gra the grip that she had on that addiction at some point. It wasn't until they adopted my great niece. Pretty sure. That's when I noticed it. Okay. So anyways. You alright buddy? Somebody wants to get his two sons in. <laughs> So, he'll probably be crying for some milk fairly soon. Fairly soon. He's got to burn the calories off to take in the milk. Yeah, he's watching Veggie Tales. So, with that, at that point in my life, my mother was also persecuting me. She kept blaming me for something that she was doing. She would pick something up. She would use it. And she would put it somewhere else that she didn't originally get it from. And if she went to the original home of that item. And she couldn't find it. All hell was loose. Storming back in my room. Flailing my door open. Rihanna May, where did you put my nail clippers? What do you mean, my, your nail clippers? Don't you have about five pairs? Well, yeah, but every time I go to find one, I can't find it because you always take it. Well, Mom, look in my room. Honestly, I don't have it. And even so, the bathroom's right there in the hallway. I, I don't even remember the last time I cut my nails. I mean, they're always so thin and fragile because I can't drink milk. I get sick from milk, from white whole milk. It turns my stomach, so I gotta drink it like a certain way. So, anyways, that was before we found out about lactate and all that fun jazz. All right, turn of the century. Stuff changed quick, obviously, apparently. <sighs> anyways, <laughs> but that had happened over and over and over and over again, blaming me for something that she literally did. And then it came down to a book. The stinking book, and I'll never forget it. I won't let it go. I have the stinking book. That's what I mean. I will not let it go. I'm going to hold on to it for a memory. As a story for my future babies. As an example. A visual example. And so, what happened was you blamed me about taking this encyclopedia that was about drugs. <laughs> I laughed and I said, what are you talking about? I said, the last time I had used that book 
was when I was prescribed antibiotics because I wanted to know what was inside of those pills that they were giving me because I don't know what it's going to do to my body in the long run. And I just want to know what it is. And she basically cursed me out about it, about her not being able to finding it, calling me a liar for something that I did not do. And I took it so much to heart. I threw my hands around my throat and I was ready to go. I was ready to go. I said, I'm ready. I'm ready. If this is what life is going to be like for something that I didn't cause, I'm done. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Wherever I go, it's going to be better than here. But God said, no, not today, honey, not today. Two minutes after I let go of myself and I started crying about it, I relaxed about it, trying to recover, dry my tears. My mom pops open my door. I'm thinking, great, what's the, what's the bullet going to be this time, mom? You know, what is it going to be this time? And she says, Rihanna, I'm sorry. I lent it to your aunt. And I said to her, <laughs> okay. <laughs> because if I knew if I said anything else after that, I would basically have gotten a smack across the face. She would literally do it, but my dad stopped her. She did it once before to me in public, and my dad caught her, and she he reamed her out for it. Okay. Sorry. Little man burned himself out. I told you it wasn't going to take very long. So, anyways, where were we? My mom, gambling, talked about Tarot, my introduction to it, my mother. And then I found out later on after her after she passed that she used to go to a tarot reader and she dated a guy that was as my aunt called him a hippie. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's totally like a 60s reference, but okay, or 70s reference, but anyway, more likely 70s for her, maybe late 60s. Anywho, they're a year apart or 11 months if you would. Um so after that, I really started getting into heavy metal. Marilyn Manson was my top favorite. For every quarrel that I was feeling, every emotion I was feeling deep down inside, it was like he was able to comfort blanket that. But just so you guys know, if you are not educated on Brian Hugh Warner, who was born January 7th, about six foot one, Marilyn Manson, good and evil, Marilyn Monroe, Charles Manson. That's his ideology for his stage, okay? There were a couple other things too. But he is the emperor the idol the emperor idol for the devil currently for the empress I would imagine it would either be Beyonce or Rihanna Rihanna came to me and uh, you seen you heard in the first video she's like my mirror situation because in this time is around the time when she came out. But a couple of years beforehand, I was starting to go through a couple of things. I was starting to hear voices. I said something to my mom. My mom poked fun at me about it. She laughed it off and made fun. She even printed out. She had my friend's mother print out a shirt that says, I don't listen to the voices in my head. And that was even when that, that, sh that phrase started to become popular. And I thought, why is everything that I'm going through right now being mirrored in the public right now because whatever I would go through then it would happen to everybody it was wild it was like I was a step ahead of experience there 
So anyways, that might come into realization later on in life. Some sort of epiphany that God might give me. I don't know. Either way, it's a blessing to know what I know now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you to everybody who's hanging in this far. Please let me know if you are. So, I know, you know. <sighs> We're not done with this. We're halfway through. So, with Rihanna, we're getting to that point with my mirror image, or mirror situation here. Okay, spiritual warfare situation. So, I had a dream paralysis, or sleep paralysis. I don't know why I call it a dream paralysis, but a sleep paralysis. The black shadow in the corner. This is the first time it introduced itself to me. Oh, and I always felt this presence outside my window in the cherry blossom tree. Like something was hiding in there and watching me through my window. So I would try to cl remember to keep my, win my curtains closed. And I would hear things crawling on the roof. Not the ceiling. I knew if there was something crawling on the ceiling, then a rodent, a squirrel or a raccoon or something got into, you know into a crack or something that's happened we'd had a squirrel out there i had told my dad because i heard scratching i knew it was an animal but what i would hear was like something big a big claw but it sounded like feet and it was like moving around to watch but i didn't know i was watching i remember the one time it was in in december and i thought to myself as a child years ago i thought is that santa claus and I was like, no, that's not Santa Claus. Deep down inside, before I was told he's not real, I'm like, he's not real. What is this crawling on the roof? What is this walking around on the roof? And why is it on the roof? What is this here for? So then I started having sleep paralysis, being stuck. I can't move. You can breathe. You can blink. But you can't move. And it's quite the challenge. Once you, ex once you overcome that challenge, and you can overcome that challenge, don't let anybody think you can't. You can. I have done it, and I do it repeatedly. Whenever it happens, I can get myself out of it. I haven't had a sleep paralysis in a few years. Thank you, Jesus. We have a few more coming up, okay? Even one in daylight. So, this black blob had... The way, the color I could only explain it is, it, it was like light of black light. If you know what a black light bulb looks like when it shines, it's like that purple fluorescent look. That's what these eyes looked like. And I, it was coming from my closet area, and I had a feeling that something was like lurking in my closet. There was something going on in the house. A lot of things. I knew it. I knew it. In my closet, occasionally under my bed. I knew it. They were watching me and after me because I was a child who was dumb. I wasn't well educated because they seen my parents. What they were able to overcome them, manipulate with them, the demons that are here, but you cannot see them. They're not in my house, but you can see them. Or you can't see them. Some can. You can't see them. You can feel them. They're there. They're real. That's what spiritual warfare is. You can't see it. You can sense it. There's just a small population that can see it. Pray for those that can see it because sometimes it can be traumatizing. So, after this happened, I started getting into more of an adult relationship. I'm about 17 at this point. I have my driver's license and I have my first job working in a warehouse, a dairy warehouse. And I mingle with this boy, a guy, not mature enough to refer as a man. Yes, I am judging there. Sorry. But the Lord and I certainly have had... That's something that the Lord had healed out of me, okay? So, anyways... He, he will get God's wrath at some point. So... 
And as I was with this gentleman, when, and that's me being as respectable as possible, I had a sleep paralysis at his place. Not his original apartment, but the second one. And I thought, why is this here now? Again. And I remember I was trying to yell his name the guy I was with I was trying to yell his name to help and I was even trying to yell help because I knew he was next to me but he couldn't hear me and I realized I'm not speaking and when I would speak it was more of a it was sounded like that so I thought well what am I going to do so I closed my eyes and I force myself with all I can, all my strength, all the muscles, thinking about the years that I spent in karate. Like, come on, muscles, I know you can do this. I know you can do this. And so I finally pop out of sleep. And at that place, I didn't have a Bible. And I thought, shoot. And this is like when Facebook just came out, when the transition of MySpace and Facebook. So... I wasn't, my, in my household here, when I was a child, we didn't have the internet. So the internet was not as accessible to me as it is today. <laughs> this house was a pioneer until about 2021. <laughs> so anyways. <sighs> that... That was a dark part of my past because as going into an adult relationship, as I was still a, a minor and this person was an adult, 12 years older, he would manipulate me with alcohol, at least three ounces of Captain and either an ounce of cherry coke or a splash of cherry coke. Occasionally beer, Budweiser, that was the choice. And whatever else, because he had groomed me into with um, barn house or barnum, whatever it is, starts with a B, wine. All that cheap wine, the spirits, all that fun jazz. Now, some of it, it does say in the Bible, you know, about drinking, but the thing is, there's gluttony. Gluttony is a sin. Gluttony is overdoing it, having too much of it. There is enough for all, but leave some for others. If you leave, if you only consume a little bit, there'll be some for the next day or for the next person. It's a way to be, to have self-control and to be selfless for others to enjoy themselves for a blip of their time. For times where it's supposed to be merry and joyful, to celebrate for what the Lord blesses thee. That's just like over consumption with, like obsession with your vehicle, right? If you have like a Tesla or I should say nowadays a Tesla or a Mercedes right or a caddy caddy with a fatty <laughs> younger generations a Volkswagen or a Beamer BMW those are usually the or Lambos Lamborghinis Ferraris do I need to continue on Rolls Royce People who have vehicles like that, those are typically a red flag because they obsess over these vehicles. They obsess over these things, Mustangs, Corvettes. I obsessed over Corvettes and I didn't have a Corvette. <sighs> that is certainly a temptation because my first thought when I seen a Corvette was, do I see a pen is on wheels? And I was 12. I see my for first Corvette. So anyways, back to the spiritual warfare story and the drinking. He would have me drink as much as, you know, to have his, 
we'll just be as soft as possible here it wasn't it was it was traumatic but in the light way to say it I don't know like way to say it Lord <laughs> okay his actual fantasies that he could not hold on to he could not overcome on his own he couldn't get past it without dabbling into it and once dabbled into it oh it's so good I want more I want more I want more gluttony I want gluttony I want gluttony adulterous adulterous because you're adding another partner another party involved or you're asking somebody to go do something very sinful something very disturbing something very dark wicked a thesaurus is helpful with this word wicked okay pick it up today a thesaurus dictionary don't forget that is something that is a useful tool with the bible as well even an encyclopedia. <laughs> I got an old encyclopedia. You know, these old books do help us with the Bible. Even dictionary.com, thesaurus.com, probably encyclopedia.com. I haven't looked into that. Side note, encyclopedia.com. See if that's existence. <clears throat> so, <sighs> there's too much to say with this person. I'm not going to sit here and rant and allow this person to overconsume this time because his time is not worth a value so we're going to move on from this situation I don't cannot recall any other spiritual situations really because I was just go 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 focusing on school making sure I graduated which I graduated at the skin of my teeth <laughs> like I think the economics teacher had pity on me because I was two years ahead like two years older than the classmates because I was held back in second because my mom didn't think I was ready to move forward and I failed seventh no I failed eighth grade because I allowed my desires to overcome me and I apparently did not learn my lesson because of the people I had found myself mingling with in relationship wise they had the same problem but different levels for after this man I went on to school for auto body for 15 months when I moved there to a different town I took that opportunity to break myself free after finalizing and looking at this box from the outside and one more time before I made a final conclusion and once I made a final conclusion that it was not for me and it was not healthy for me therefore I don't want it for me I set you free I wind up latching on to somebody that was even worse somebody that would throw the Bible in your face take you to church but then take you away from church and manipulate you would use the Bible to scare the crap out of you so that they can use their wicked manipulative ways a narcissist if I may to use you as a pawn this is the one that I had wound up marrying and when I would think I was pregnant at all he would shove my abdomen still asking God to help me solve that one and I believe he will through scripture but I did have a big M carry. I thought I was going to, I thought I wasn't going to make it the next day, to the next day. Because it was that painful. And it's, it, it hurts inside the heart, everywhere. And it doesn't just sit there for once. It's every mother's year, every mother's day, every year, every single year that same day comes up when that had happened or you you get reminded of it all the time when it's something that you desire a child that you desire and you can't have it but you see others having it but in your eyes you don't understand why these people are having children and you cannot 
for what my problem was, I was with somebody that didn't want children, but they were not brave enough, courageous enough. They were too much of a coward to come in front of one that had became their wife and tell them that they did not want children. Okay. All you had to do is say something. But you didn't, did, did you not say because you didn't, you were afraid that you were going to lose me. If that is the case, then I am your comfort blanket and I am your shelter. Why would you do this to me? Scratch that. I am your wife. Why would you do this to me? For I'm serving you and I'm doing what I can. He was a drinker too. All the time. I would be working day and night. First shift, second shift. And the little extra second shift where it moves into a little bit of a third shift. Fast food. <laughs> So anyways, he would be at home playing these little video games. Oh, I just got a new achievement. Oh, yeah, you did? Well, what about achieving on picking up your dirty clothes off the floor? I'm out working to pay for the bills that then when the bills come due, you tell me, no, honey, don't pay them. I have them under cover. Or underhand. Oh, okay, you you have control of them, dear. But the thing is, I see what you're doing, but you're not being truthful to me. What you're doing is, you're going behind my back and you're putting it on your father's card, your father's credit card, and then your father comes to you and asks you questions and then you come and attack me. I'm seeing the ripple effect here and where it's going, coming and going. But yet you want to blame me for all your faults and problems. I'm not your trampoline. I'm not somebody to bounce off of so that you feel better. Move on. When I was with this man, I started having dreams. This one dream I had particularly had intrigued me. It was like I was being told to run, run away, run. And once you're able to run, run as far as you possibly can from this. And I was confused because his parents I loved, like his mother, I, I did adore because it, they, they did go to church, but his dad, I was like, eh. I like your dad, but it's just, eh. there's something, eh. I don't know. I don't know. Is that where you inherit this? Though you blame everything on your mother for how she had treated you in your past. I had done that too at that point, but I had realized after my mother had passed, had lost her life, gone to whichever realm she had gone to. So it be. That I was allowing that situation to overcome me rather than learning from it. When you actually repent and you actually give your heart over, then Jesus Christ will heal you from those past sorrows and pain. He will also, in a loving and humbling manner, help you see why and how to overcome it. Why overcome it? How overcome it? And also understand the underlining meaning of it because he wants you to understand it so you can help a brother or a sister or a mother or a father. Anybody who needs help, give them your open, willing hand. As it does say in Deuteronomy, <laughs> I just tell my husband that I've been trying really hard to say it correctly throughout this video about giving an open hand it is about the tithing principles but also the um seven years every seven years you shall grant a release of debt that's what the chapter is about and it's all about giving a brother an open willing hand even if he is wicked but when you see or hear wickedness heed warning and be careful. But it does state in there that you can give them, offer them what is good for you and those who dwell in your home. 
or dwell with you behind those gates that enter your dwelling. Or you can also give them what it does not things that do not serve you, the things that the Bible tells you not to consume for your house, your dwellings, how you are living, how you are taking care of those who are in your dwelling, your home, your household. So fast forward here. We're coming up to the end. So I had every night, and this is where I was also getting kind of confused, the whole marriage with this nasty man, this nasty coward, is what we'll call him. trying to make sure I say what I want to say. I had prayed to God almost every night of that marriage after we got married in 2011. And I told him this, but he did not believe me. Why? I don't know. It kind of might have opened me up to how he truly believes in God, maybe, at that time. I don't know. Anyways, only God knows. So, I would thank God that, thank you for having this man in my life. For he had brought me back to you. I myself appreciate that. But I knew, deep down within, that there was something else going on. And I didn't know what it was. So I just kept my head low and I just went to work, came home, went to work, came home. But he would have nasty fits. He would harm my dog. He would get belligerently drunk, harm my dog to the point where a couple of years after when we went to go have his final moment, he had a divot in his back and a couple of humps in his head. He used an aluminum bat. He was a very confusing man. I tried very hard to have patience. And I think the go- I think God seen that. I think he did see that for sure. I mean he sees all. So why should I even doubt? Or even sound as though I am doubting. I'm not doubting in my heart. <sighs> just I guess I'm flabbergasted, fathomed that it just like Demons and angels are real. Angels, God, Jesus, like he he helps us. We have the Holy Spirit. The demons are against us. He is the one that ploys different types of games. It's almost like a wheel. He, he rolls every, whatever he considers as mourning. What are we going to focus on at this hour? What we're going to focus on in three hours. What are we going to work on in five hours? It's like, you know. Or what is it that needs to be focused on as he's having a sip of coffee? Anyways. It's wild, you know? It blows my mind. Well, it also blows my Anyways. I keep trying to veer myself off. And I'm trying to stay on track here. <laughs> For we are nearing to the end. So, the last time I moved out of state, um, my dad got diagnosed with three or four types of cancers. I want to say it was three. Um, I did. I might have spoken about this in the two videos beforehand. That one was really hard for me. And I fell under a drinking spell. I was drinking 230 racks a week. Every seven days. Every three and a half days, I would go to the beer distributor and get another 30 rack. I was having it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. I would have an open one on my nightstand. I even had a hot one in the truck. 
I remember that was kind of like a hey girl what are you doing because it was like boiling hot it was like drinking hot tea straight out of the microwave right off of the burner and I guzzled it <laughs> I guzzled it and I remember you know thinking to myself you know that means you have a problem I thought I know I know I need to buckle down on that I need to work on that so I did of course the person I was married to is your your brother is calling me and asking okay all right mr. 900 miles away allegedly worried about his wife that acts like he cares but every time we're facetiming you're busy focusing on your TV screen worrying about your competitor and what they're doing and then this little child that called himself a man wants to cry the blues because he could not get to a stinking competition an online competition to beat these little brats people were probably 10 15 20 years younger than him crying out loud so childish sitting there all day 24 hours playing a dang video game get the heck up off your butt anyways sorry i suppose that's a little past aggression there past built up aggression so he complained about that while we were on our driving out and it was his idea to drive out here but the way he had acted like i should make sure I, I take what I wanted to take and I said okay so I gathered things up come to realize he was trying to figure out a plan to drop me off thinking this was a perfect opportunity to drop her off here at her parents house oh no 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 better yet I'll double down on my words of what I had said when we first got married I'm a family man Okay. I like to be home at nighttime with the family. Okay. Oh, now you're going to become a trucker. Okay, sure. And then <laughs> you say what I was taught from the teachings I was taught with my father at a specific church. It was like a men's group. That's it. Men's group. Uh, he said that he had learned that if you leave a woman astray and don't fulfill the needs, then they can wind up going somewhere else. Well, sweetie, that's two-way street. Um, but so doubling down on that, okay, we will. Okay, I'll 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 leave you at my, our best friend's house. I'll totally put to the side and ignore your your offer of asking your uncle to rent out his cabin. No, 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 no. no. This is a better idea, my wife, to leave you at. Our male friend's house. Yes. Yes. That's the wisest idea for me to do. Because then she'll be distracted. Right? So she was distracted. All right. You got what you asked for. You got what you wanted. But then had gotten upset. And then I had fight, had to fight this demon-possessed person to be released from his grip. His grasp. And when I go there... <laughs> When I go there, I should have taken a picture. When I showed up abruptly, six months pregnant, and he didn't know, with this man that he had left me with. Picking up whatever it was that he'll allow me to take back. Because he took my name off of the lease. Therefore, I was not allowed to go inside and gather up my stuff. I had to wait outside, and him and his little boy friend friend that's a boy had to bring things out oh wow okay he has to get up off his lazy butt and actually do something this is going to be entertainable if i knew this i would have brought popcorn so but when we showed up and told him what time we were going to show up the next day he was wearing a satanic shirt Oh, so the stories that you, the only true stories that you were telling me was the fact that you are satanic. And you haven't left that. Interesting. I see your heart. You'll get the wrath. 
So now we're on to close to where I'm at now. I become pregnant while my father was sick and he was taking morphine. He was prescribed by hospice to take this morphine. It's the only, only item in the box that they send us that we had to give him. And once this hits his mouth, within a few hours, he becomes incoherent. That's really hard when you're pregnant. And this is the first child that your dad will see. Okay. I didn't cry. I didn't cry about it until... That child became two months, and I was listening to country music, and it just molly whopped me. A whole bunch of stuff. Memories of my dad, and I just started crying. Started crying, going through all sorts of stuff. And this that's when I started up my YouTube channel as Mystical33 with Tarot. Because of my dad being sick and everything else, well, I started Tarot because my friend had taken his life but that's something else that was very unfortunate that, that he had left this world so my father um, with the pregnancy going through terror you guys see all of that on here my mother, she wound up getting diagnosed with cancer a couple of weeks before my dad passed away. So being a child, knowing the outcome of how things were going to happen after both of which were gone, it was, it was very scary. My now husband was my rock. Though my emotions did cause problems. And it wasn't just my emotions. But it was also dabbling in with divination. For allowing myself to dabble in. Continue dabbling into divination. And allowing again for the world to see. And allowing the world from here. From near to far from this side of the earth to the other side of the earth I had helped others sin by even just viewing by watching by listening for that is a way to taint someone who is meant to be holy to be part of God's kingdom part of that 144,000 names that are to be revealed in the book of life when the day comes for all the books to be open and for all these names to be called, for all to be examined. So, please take my channel as a heat of warning to the gray area. For divination will cause turmoil with where you are dwelling because it is something that you are hyper focused on obsessing over in some form of sort of category different levels okay because it takes you one place to another to another to another to another okay you're always following don't say it doesn't because it does you get the cards they talk about meditating, meditation, the chakras. That's where you're moving from point one, point two, point three. Okay? It's taking you down different aisles, different lots, taking you to different convenience stores if you want to use that analogy. How much do you like the convenience store of Terra? Oh, you enjoy that. You're going to hang out there. Okay. Well, I'm going to go hang out over at the Ouija board one. You know what I mean? Oh, what's this? Okay, until you keep going down the line, 
where you get further and further I got toys <laughs> further away my daughter likes chairs she's got three over here I'm like this is her bedroom chair what the heck <laughs> so anyways as you continue down the line you're going to wind up narrowing yourself further and further and further away from something that you just ripped yourself away from but <laughs> let me tell you if you allow yourself back to Christ allow him into your life allow him into your heart ask him to forgive you for your sins and help ask him to help you in your path then all of that you took all of that time to get over here in my experience it will not take that amount of time to be thrown back when I said in the beginning I got flown back to Jesus Christ I got flown back I was mollywopped I was slapped I felt when I read that stone part I felt the stones and I collapsed to the side and I laid for a moment there <laughs> And that's when I had the realization is my sisters and brothers that are trying to call me back to my roots. Also, it does state in the Bible, we'll get into that too, that for these false gods, with what they allow you to do, and divination is a connection to false gods, and so is a Ouija board. If you say it doesn't, then you are in denial of good, evil, heaven, hell. There cannot be a heaven without a hell, and hell, no hell without a heaven. There are different layers. So anyways, it does say that if you engage with them and you do not recognize, you don't repent, therefore you will join them in their dwelling if that's what your heart calls for go ahead but darling mine does not so I'm saying to the ones that are wicked within the heart there that might be questioning what I'm doing take one second and look in the mirror and question yourself while watching this video For the next public video, we are going to go into Galatians chapter 5, where it speaks about divination. Sorry, not specifically divination, but it speaks about sorcery. Having interconnections with these false gods in Deuteronomy, God. Jesus' father that is stricter than Jesus, okay? God is forgiving, but not as, as forgiving as Jesus, okay? For Jesus is his forgiving son. But God, he's forgiving. But he also knows that he is not perfect too. If you look back in Genesis where he's he constantly says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When he realizes that the giants are mating with the children or with the humans. But it does state in here, in chapter 12, verse 23 to 28, only be sure that you do not eat the blood, for the blood is life. What else calls for blood? Demonic situations. If you want to get deep down within witchcraft, wicca, sorcery, satanic situations, that's typically where the blood comes from, especially women. It does state in the books that M blood, that's as gentle as I'm going to be with that. M blood, you, you are smart enough to figure that out, is supposed to be like the strongest blood of all to be used 
Come on. Because who was it that took the fruit of knowledge? It was Eve. It was the female. For she was the one that was impatient and anxious and was not listening. Right? Think about it. We all are who we are and doing what we are doing today because of Adam and Eve. So anyways, continuing on here about blood and life. Because we are not to eat the blood and just the blood. Because the blood is of life. The blood is to go onto the ground. Right? It's starting here at 24. You shall not eat it. You shall pour it on the earth like water. You shall not eat it that it may go well with you and your children after you. When you do what is right in the sight of the Lord, only the holy things which you have and your vowed offerings, you shall take and go to the place which the Lord chooses, and you shall offer your burnt offerings, the meat and the blood on the altar of the Lord your God. And the blood of your sacrifices shall be poured out on the, on the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall eat the meat, observe and obey all these words which I command you, and that I may go well with you and your children after you forever. Then you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. When the Lord your God cuts off from before you the nations which you go, sorry, we are in verse 29 going down to 31. <laughs> when the Lord your God cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dis dispossess and you displace them and dwell in their land, take heed to yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them. After they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods, these false gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? I also will do likewise. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way, for every abomination to the Lord which he hates. They have done to their gods, for they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. You want the last verse of that? It says, whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor Take it away. Meaning, don't put words in his mouth. And don't take it out and scramble it up. Because therefore, if you do, that's a way to deceive God. So it's not only a one point that you have to focus on. It's like literal, metaphorical, logical. Put it all together and what do you get? So, <laughs> anyways, but um, I came to the thought of having this because after I got done recording the first video, or no, Matthews, I recorded Matthews, Matthews 12, Matthew, sorry, I keep adding an S, driving me nuts, Matthew 12, I got done recording it, and my old pastor calls me, I contacted him after I brought my you know allowed myself back to God and asked him to come back born again and I explained to him a little bit of what was going on I explained more in a text message I haven't gotten a reply back I don't you know in God's timing honestly that's just how it is to be honest with you and it's really beautiful and fun and joyful it really is my family is now having a lot of fun there's so much peace in this household now so thankful for that some more tension and aggression and fighting and yeah it's all gone. There's times where you gotta put your foot down because, you know, being a parent, a toddler, a teenager, or preteen right now. So, 
her transition's coming up soon to be a teenager. That's why I keep saying teenager. Oh. But now I s am certainly thankful for where I am, for what I do. But this pastor, I explained to him the past, because I, March 7th, that night, I gave myself over to God, Jesus Christ. I cried. I cried. I was just broken because of everything. And my husband and I were fighting again, and we we're having a stupid, petty fight. And I'm asking myself, why is this happening? I know we love each other. I asked him to marry me. I asked him to marry me. I, the woman. Because I wanted to marry him. I loved him and he loved me. I liked the unconditional love that he was giving me when he would give it to me. But I always want more. Marriage. So, anyways. I allowed myself on a little sabbatical. About seven days. I said, I gotta get my shit straight. This is what I'm saying to God. I said, I gotta get my shit straight. Before I can go back to recording. And so, I said, alright, well, what if we learn a little bit first? You and me together, okay? I pulled out that darn flower. <laughs> Where did I put it? I don't remember. It's probably over at my little cubby. I have a cubby over here. I have to put it somewhere so my daughter doesn't get it because she thinks it's for her because it's a flower. And I'm like, no, this is a special flower. Because a special flower is what led me to this Bible. It confirmed a trip that I should take to the Bible store or the Christian store that I used to go to many years ago when I was in auto body school. When I got saved then. Because I got saved back there. That was the second trip being saved when my husband, my first husband, when we were dating, when we first started dating, he threw the Bible at me. And I'm like, well, yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. I have been sinful since last time I had sa been saved. So, yes, I, I do need to repent. You know, that's what was going through my mind at the time anyways. So, this is my third time around. And I'm sticking to it, baby. I'm here. I'm here hardcore. Hardcore. <laughs> For I have gained knowledge of this, it really opens my eyes to the extreme truth that this beholds. For this beholds way more truth than what, I mean, it holds more, what, more knowledge of what is needed on an everyday basis in the Bible, not these. Not these, guys. Not these. Alright? What do I plan on doing with them? I already learned. In Deuteronomy, they want you to burn it. Take it, put it in the streets, and burn it. It is in here between chapter 13 and 14. We will get into that. Just to prove God's word, God's truth, upon this controversial topic and not only that but also the warfare that is going on that scripture i gave you in the wee beginning for you to put in your back pocket for in the future the near future for that is in the last chapter of revelations you know chapter 22 It's all right there, baby. So, for anybody that wants evidence, if a document can hold up in the court of law as evidence, as valid evidence, why can't the Bible hold up as evidence to a simple civilian? Do you know 
this information originates my nerds those who seek for origins is within here son we can use this but this is only a crutch this is not a crutch I just want to make that clear this is not a crutch this is a manual script to help us God's children to live holy to live in his word to live in his truth to live his way of life in the flesh I also want to ask to some what is it that makes you not think that if one were to go to hell why would you think you would have color blood that pumps through your veins is what helps provide the pigment of your skin for all the organs inside are moving they're pumping they're doing their job so therefore the pigment of your skin is able to shine through but once you go down once you go to hell you're in hell you're dead you are not given the tree of life that God Jesus Christ can provide to his children so therefore in hell since the blood represents life that blood is taken out because that blood for some reason was taken for granted if you do not realize what is being taken for granted overcome that gluttony just consuming what you can if you're constantly focusing on it it's an addiction I was addicted to tarot cards I was constantly focused on them what's gonna happen next what what's gonna happen here what's gonna happen there you know else even outside of reading for a recording boom 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 what's happening what's going on blah 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 blah, blah. you know it, it, it's it's a literal addiction so therefore not only is it one sin it takes you to another one and if you stay in there for a little longer it's just going to shift you to another one to another one and to another one and each one as you do your dwelling will receive the repercussion if you have not learned through my story for some people call it karma but it is not karma that is the original name what it is is Jesus Christ and God's wrath the effect of it for that is where the demons the warfare part swoops right on in and overcomes you're being gluttonous oh baby we got you we got you you want gluttonous let me show you gluttony honey right oh you like that yeah let me show you some more yeah yeah oh let me get my buddy over here yeah look at that yeah like just think of it demons coming up behind you and all of a sudden you got yourself committed to something else that's comparable to this other sin that took you here whether it's drinking x or overconsumption laziness envy cursing somebody else's name <laughs> like or sorcery but just remember for those of you who decide to go over to Christ you gotta mean it from the heart that's the important part that's the important part also my story and my channel because I'm leaving the old stuff there not to antagonize anybody what it's for being left there for now is for you the viewer anybody who wants to 
judge me as a brother or sister. For though you are not my judger, he is my judge. My final judge. He knows if my name is in that book or not. That's all that matters. Thank you again to the sisters that threw the stones at me. Just saying, side note there. <laughs> but anyways. Seriously. Open up your eyes, guys. Open up your eyes. Peel off that blindfold. Clean out the ears. And look. Look at what's going on in the world. You cannot tell me that is good. And it's only going to get worse. It really is. Almost every chief demon, even the higher ones, the second to none, Satan himself, Baal. Baal, Belzebub, Belphegor, can't remember the one with the A. That one's for lust, for sure. But anyways, these are just a few of them. They're being offered from those that you idolize. Those of you who watch... Beyonce, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, Doja Cat, okay, Taylor Swift, your little Swifties, Swifty, that's the congregational cult, Swifty is the name of Taylor Swift's congregation, think about it. Be careful what you say at the crossroads. And don't ever make wishes either. Wishes. Making a dang wish. Even on a falling star. Is the devil's way. To mess with your head. And make you question. Your morals. For he thinks he's better than God. But he is not. He is weak compared to God and Jesus Christ. And this is where I'm going to end the video. Wow, this is an hour and a half. Interesting. I hope I didn't bore anybody. Um, it's my first time doing this. No script, as I'm sure you can tell. More likely, hopefully, through the editing. <laughs> um, but anyways. This will be... The l After this one, I do plan on making a members first. Which, again, just to summarize on the, all of that bit of what's coming up next is we're going to look into the seven deadly sins and the demons that are connected to them. Why, you may ask... For two reasons, maybe three, to prove that, that these are real, to prove God's word, whether that happens now or three years from now, and then also to help those who are wise and smart. I know that as many people who are going to view this at some point. These are things that you need to know in your back pocket so you can help not only yourself, your children, and your future brothers and sisters. It's a way to help remove the fog. Help remove the fog help remove tearing off the bandage the wound needs to be seen the wound needs oxygen to create that scab 
to move on to healing. For you could heal on the Sabbath day when it comes to God compared in when you look into the Old Testament again in Deuteronomy. That's in my day's lesson today. <laughs> For those chapters, 12, 13, 14. I think 15 too. Was it 15? Was it? Was it 15? Yes, it was 15 as well. I have them dated too. <laughs> so anyways... For the next public one, as I have promised you, I will. We will look into Galatians 5. And then we need to look into the whole chapter of false gods. My whole point here in this chat or in this channel is mainly to show you guys God is real, so is his word, his word is true. Listen a little closer. Look at it at different angles. What you read. And it will come clear. Logical. Literal. Metaphorical. But you got to put them all together. For he means his words. But if we think of it. All three of those ways. It might. It might seem more modernized so that's what I have for you guys if you did again if you made it this far if you find yourself enjoying please do me a favor hit that like button share comment subscribe until next time my lovely brothers and sisters God bless and off you to Zane until next time Bye-bye.